Breaking tonight, 72 hours after a misleading report slamming Republican White House hopeful Governor Chris Christie, the New York Times now admits it erred in its initial reporting on this story, and yet it has failed to publicly acknowledge its mistake when it's been updating its articles. Here's how it all started. On Friday, a former New Jersey official, David Wildstein, who once worked for the Christie camp, claimed through his attorney that contrary to the governor's claims, Mr. Christie may have had knowledge of the lane closures on the GW Bridge at the time they were happening. The Times fired off this article titled, quote, Christie knew about lane closings as they happened, ex-ally says, adding, quote, that that ex-ally, Wildstein, had evidence to prove it. Well, we at the Kelly File noticed right away that that attorney letter did not actually go as far as the New York Times was suggesting. Here's how we reported it. Tying him to having knowledge. The evidence exists tying him to having the. What does that mean? He knew? Is that what you mean? Then why don't you just say he knew? It's not what the letter says. Since then, the Times has changed its initial reporting to better comport with the actual allegations in the letter, but the damage has been done. And the Times failed to call attention to its updated reporting to point out to the readers that it was changing its story. Joining me now, Ben Shapiro, radio host and editor and co-founder of TruthRevolt.org, which is a media watchdog group. And Howard Kurtz is host of Media Buzz right here on the Fox News Channel and a media commentator. So, you know, I mean, I read the thing as just as a lawyer on, on Friday and said, I, this is an important qualifier. Because if you read the actual letter, Ben, the lawyer speaks in short declarative sentences and questions until he gets to that part. And then he has all sorts of flowery language in there to try to qualify what Christie knew or didn't know and the evidence that may or may not exist around at the Times. Um, made a mistake here. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, it, here, here's the problem. The statement that you know that evidence exists is not the same as the statement that you have evidence. If you have evidence that Barack Obama is actually an alien from Mars, then we'd all like to see it. If you think that evidence exists, that that is the case, then we're probably not going to listen to you. Uh, that, that's the difference that the Times sort of messed up here. But the Times messed it up because they're out to get Chris Christie. And, and in the end, it's actually going to end up benefiting Chris Christie because all the people, including conservatives like me, who are not super fond of Chris Christie, there's going to be a rally around the flag effect when the media starts to oversell the story about Chris Christie with stories that it ends up having to backtrack on. What do you think, Howie? Well, the Times compounded its initial mistake, Megan, by sweeping it under the rug. Once that wording, which was so misleading, sheer sloppiness, was toned down, there was no correction. There was no clarification. There was no editor's note. Readers would have no way of knowing that the headline and the lead were misleading. And that story helped MSNBC go to DEFCON 5 over this story. So the paper wasn't straight with its readers. But it did do one thing right, I have to say, and that is in, in, in publishing that story online. It also posted the letter itself from David Wallstein's lawyer. So mm -hmm. you, me, everybody else could look at it and reach our own conclusions and come to the conclusion that it wasn't quite as the initial time story well had. that's exactly right i mean i because I, I read the, the times headline like everybody else and said whoa and then i clicked on the actual lawyer letter and said oh well i take back my whoa uh you know because it's different to say he knew an ex-ally is alleging he knew and he's got the proof that's much different than Evidence exists as well, tying Mr. Christie to having knowledge. And, you know, I mean, that, that's a totally different message, Ben. It absolutely is a totally different message. And honestly, my, my biggest critique of the media in the, in the Chris Christie scandal is actually not even their their ability and their, their attempt to go after Chris Christie. I wish that they were this hard on Barack Obama. I, I sort of like that the media is this rabid. I, I wish they weren't getting things wrong. But if, if the media were this rabid with regard to all of our, our, our leaders, I think that we'd be a better country. Uh, but, you know, obviously, look, there, there is a bias to the media. And, and if this sort of thing had come out about Barack Obama, there's no question that an update at the bottom of the page with a correction would have been issued by the New York Times. And there wouldn't have been a lot of excuses about how the error wasn't so big that to, to, as to actually merit a, an open correction. Well, what do you make of it, Howie? Because after the Times had that report that afternoon, and as you point out, the letter was there for all to see. I mean, it was there for all to see. All you had to do was click on it. We, they, they were they were wall to wall, and it wasn't just on MS. They were wall to wall on CNN. They had lawyers on there analyzing this. I mean, it, it set off such a react. It was like the world is. They reacted as though the report was Christie knew he was in on it. He planned the whole thing from the beginning. He and Bridget, you know, and Kelly are like this. 
And, you know, New York Star Ledger saying in an editorial that if this is true, Christie will have to resign. There right. was an overreaction in the media. But I do have to say, for David Wildstein, who was a member of Christie's inner circle, who was an appointee to the agency that runs the George Washington Bridge, for him to very publicly, through that letter, turn on Christie is a potentially important story yes. that should have been covered. It didn't need to be hyped. I would disagree the Times is out to get Christie. In fact, Chris Christie used to be the media's favorite Republican. They liked his, bull, his brash style, his personality, in your face. Jersey Shore, more moderate brand of Republicanism. Oh, yeah. Now, of course, the blood is in the water. Everybody's piling on. He, it is a local story for the New York Times because it's in New Jersey. Uh, but I do think that this set the tone for a lot of the media overreaction. Now there's been a kind of a, oh, almost like a stock market correction, kind of a pullback. And Chris Christie loved the, the, the le left-leaning media. I mean, he was, all, he was on MSNBC, and he, he you know, always gave these interviews to them, and you know, they turned now, on a dime. He's sending out letters attacking the New York Times, which is good politics, blame the messenger, play to his base, but ultimately he's either going to be proven right that he was telling the truth at that two-hour press conference or not, yeah. regardless of what. Uh, what I'll tell you the one thing that jumped out at me about Chris Christie's response going after Wildstein was the fact that he's talking about how the guy's social studies teacher used to feel about him in high school. In high Somebody school, in Chris Christie's Talk camp should have said, punching back. "Governor, that might not be your most persuasive point. That's, <laughs> that's not really going to win the hearts and minds." His social studies teacher didn't even think he was an ethical person. Whatever it was. All right, guys. Thank Mike? you. <laughs>